So, Clay, when it comes to ATGs, um, where do you get started? Where's the low-hanging fruit? Well, first, being able to you know have visibility, to be able to monitor it, being able to see your inventory. Um, and I guess optimizing your inventory is, is probably the, the first low-hanging fruit because everybody's using it currently to see what my inventory levels are mm-hmm. before the end of the shift, at the end of the day at the sea store. So a lot of times you have like carriers that are, their incentive is to give you fuel. Mm. So what we see is the average amount of fuel that's in the ground sometimes stay at you know, five, 6,000 gallons, wow. which you can easily reduce that reserve that's underground to a, a controlled level and still get fuel and periodic you know, deliveries that you're able to cycle through the entire tank, not just running in one zone. And by being able to keep some of that money out of the ground and actually make it usable, you're reco- recovering a lot of dollars that's you know in those tanks mm. that's never being cycled. Uh, we've seen you know changing some of the secondary products for a client. Now, for one site, uh, still a lot for one mm-hmm. site, but you do that across you know a thousand sites. Yeah. I'm able to reduce 3,000 gallons of fuel in two of my tanks at all you know, 1,000 locations. That's 5,000 gallons of fuel times 1,000. Yeah. How much money is that that you're keeping in the ground? So being able to see it, being mm-hmm. able to, to understand how much is actually being kept on inventory. I mean, I mean, no one in, in supply on the shelves at the grocery store is never going to keep that much right. you know, on stock. Um, so being able to cycle through your fuel and have a, a, a constant delivery pattern that manage your fuel levels is probably first first low hanging fruit. Interesting, interesting. And then down the road, as we start to look at for more kind of advanced features, if you will, in terms of being able to realize the business potential of ATGs, what, what else do you look for? Well, the, the other business potential is, is compliance. Uh, being able to see what's Tapping in the gauge, you know, your remote monitoring tool, CSLD, which is continuous statistical detection, um, being able to see your sensor results and line results to make sure that you have passing tests so you're not getting the fine, and that you're able to do this remotely. You're, being, you're able to automate the monitoring of your release detection without having to go every month to the location and do you know, find out if there's a problem. So being able to remotely monitor that pick up phone with alarms helps make sure you're fine free and make sure that you're running you know, more efficiently, and that you can see those alarms and take action when there's a need instead of waiting two or three days mm. where you may already have a leak and waiting for a customer to say, hey, I smell fuel out here. Yeah. You know, so the next step down the line is really locking in your compliance and release detection. Being able to see what's actually happening and understand the alarm so that you can not only have your compliance and environmental you know, requirements met, but being able to reduce your maintenance costs because you're head up, you know, you're ahead of the curve on the alarm notification. So the, the first part is optimize your inventory so that you can man- better manage your cash flow. You don't want to leave money in the ground right. that's not being used. And then the second piece is you don't want to be paying fines that you don't need to be paying. Yeah. And having a, a an actionable plan to basically catch the alarms and, uh, and act on them in a reasonable fashion. All right. And then in addition to the compliance, you've also spoken about insurance reporting. Can you talk a little bit about that? Where does ATG fit as it relates to insurance or remediation? Well, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of clients um, keep you know, I guess financial reserves on hand in case there is a release. Mm. These can be millions of dollars in financial reserves because you don't know what the penalty is. So they just usually double that fine wow. and keep that amount on reserve. So you can reduce your financial reserves that are needed for compliance you know, issues. Um, the other thing is by keeping everything, I guess, documented, you know, well monitored, that you have the supporting documentation that you've done what you should do, mm. then when there is an issue, the insurance you know, claims are, are paid you know, better because a lot of times they're not getting, you know, like most insurance, if you didn't do this, you we're, we're not responsible for paying your, your insurance claim. So by being 
you know, diligent in your monitoring and documentation. Make sure that you have done everything you could possibly do. And when an accident occurred, then the insurance claims are, are paid uh, better. Your, your financial reserves that you need to stay on, keep on hand to pay those fines are also reduced because you've done what you should. You've monitored everything, and better yet, you've kept the environment clean, which is the whole reason why they have the environmental rules to begin with. So instead of inflating your reserves for something that might happen, you proactively keep all the records so that you can defend yourself if something should happen. Correct. It's a whole different philosophy and a whole different mindset to, uh, to a large extent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, if you if you're waiting for rain, yeah, it's great to to you know stay indoors and say it's going to rain. But if you got an umbrella, you can go walking around and hey, I'm I'm prepared for that. Now, now, you've talked about how most C stores today already have some kind of ATG. It be it an old one or a modern one at the likes. What kind of hardware upgrades would we need so that we can realize the full potential of ATGs? Well, like I said, there are still gauges out there that are on phone modems. <laughs> um, as, as funny as that sounds, um, the, those would probably be the first ones I would try to, to update just so that you would have constant communications. But if a gauge has a serial port, a, um, a network card, any sort of way to plug into either a serial Ethernet converter or a, you know, get onto a network, whether it's the back office router, uh, and, you know, cell modems, or whatever that's available as far as network communications, as long as you have a way to plug into the gauge with this either serial mm. uh, network, we even you could even plug into the RJ11 on the modem as long as you had a device that could translate connectivity, mm. uh, so that in today's world with IPs and ports you have you know steady reliable communication. And when you have steady reliable communication, not only do you have the ability to go in and see it, you can also program these gauges to outbound when something occurs. Mm. So you have real-time ability to say, hey, there's a problem. Instead of you having to proactively log in and see something or get a notification via an email when you poll, you can have that gauge reach out and say, hey, I've got a problem that's starting to develop. Mm -hmm. So hardware-wise, a serial card, um, a network card, which ranges between you know, 200 to 800 bucks as far as what they will cost. Uh, that would definitely give you visibility to the gauge. Uh, most gauges, most, are already going to have these. The new gauges that are, that are coming out, 450s and 550 EVOs, already come standard with a network card. Okay. So you're already going to have these devices. Uh, the older gauges have serial cards, uh, which are typically easy to, to plug into. So the next step, as far as once you have communication, if you want to upgrade other functionality like flow rate, monitoring, nozzle down or dispenser issues, you'll need the other hardware like an EDEM or some sort of interface to that hardware to your dispenser loop. But initial, but you're going to need some sort of card to plug into your network. So, so when I think about putting these devices now on, onto a network, the very next question is, how do I secure them? How do I protect them? Well, <clears throat> this is actually a, a lot of a lot of gauges, and you've, you've probably seen over the past several years where there have been DDoS attacks and other things where most gauges have a default port. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a, uh, using a public IP address and a default port, there have been attacks on these gauges where they go and change the labeling. A few years ago, someone changed all the labels on the tanks to power to the people. Oh. Uh, that was a, a oh. main, main national news. Uh, just recently, back in January 1, uh, we saw that there was a, an attack that came from Australia based IP address that was just logging into the gauge and keeping that communication open. Wow. Most of the older ATGs will only support one connectivity socket at a time. So it was locked up, so you always got a busy signal and you no longer had ability to reach your gauge. So yes, the first thing is you want a behind the firewall of some sort. Yes. Some sort of VPN or ability to connect to them on a private network or at least have that security firewall up front because a public IP is great. Um, you want to give you a true story? One of my, my solve one days, as far as what happened, we had a, a, a site that was on a public IP, it was a cell modem, and we weren't really 
seeing anything bad. It's just someone kept attacking the same router. Oh, wow. So we got eleven thousand dollar phone bill because of the data packets that were being used for oh. the SL modem where people were hitting and trying to get data from the gauge, but I mean it wasn't really impacting the gauge. But the cell modem expense was eleven thousand dollars. But the the thing is, being able to put a passcode on the, on the gauge, you can definitely do that. But most gauges only support a six character, uh, you know, easily hacked. Yeah, which is in a brute force hack, you do it in a day and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by being able to put it behind a, a, a reliable source, mm-hmm. it definitely you know controls who has access, which is going to be you know. You know, a lot of savings, especially preventing a lot of those outside DDoS attacks and access that you don't want. Um, because once you understand the value of the gauge, you can understand the value of being able to be very secure with that gauge. Because if someone else can get into it and screw it up, yeah, you're going to have to do something about it. And that's some of the other things is like config management sort of items. You can monitor the gauge to see if something changes. Um, often you'll have a technician go on location and change stuff, and he really shouldn't. Right. And this is, of course, going to be impactful. This is why we're talking about security. You'll have people, if they have public access, you may have a disgruntled employee leave your organization and hack back into that gauge uh-huh. and change something where they shouldn't have. Uh-huh. So having that security, that VPN, not only protects you, Currently, but in the future, for those unknown things that we've not experienced yet. In this day and age, this is just a norm of freedom. Yeah, yeah. This is security is is I guess it's understood as a necessity. Mm. It's no longer a, hey, we need to be more secure. It's like mm. you know, it's it's assumed you're going to have everything secure. Well, Clay, we've covered a lot of ground here in terms of looking at the ATGs of where they are, or where they are today, and where they're going. Um, do you have any final words of advice uh, for operators uh, who are thinking about looking at their ATG strategy today and how they should be moving forward with that? Well, it's always good to go back through your ATGs and, and understand what's been happening. With them. Mm-hmm. Understand the programming. Really understand the device so that you can manage it instead of it managing you. Mm. Because if you're managing your device, then you know what those settings are. When you get the alarm, you know what that means and you know how to act on it. If you don't understand what the gauge can do and what it, what you can get from it, then there is, there's a whole world of potential that you're just not tapping into. So, Get into the gauge, learn it. That's why they have the annual certifications in California, is you need to review to make sure it's correct. Yeah. Make sure something didn't change. You know, the world evolves, and if you're not staying on top of it, it's going to eventually bite you in the butt with a huge fine, mm. and that's what you're trying to prevent. Well, Clay, thank you very much for our speaking with us today. Well, thank you, Tim. This is uh, Tim Tank from Hughes, and I've been speaking with Clay Moore of Titan Cloud.